Thank you guys for joining. Always, let's do that audio check. I did some reconfiguring on my on my wires on here. I had some things plugged in in the wrong USBs. I got them right now. Just need to, sounds great, excellent. That'll work. Because if you can hear me good, then I'm pretty sure everybody else can too. Dave's Mumsy, I answered one email about Chronicon and then another one. I don't know which one you're referring to. I did see another just now that, that I need to respond to about the way she rearranged all my uh, my calendar deals. I wasn't really excited about that, but overall, her, uh, her job is fantastic. What she's doing is awesome. Digitizing. Excellent. See this chat. Let's see. This works okay. Well, I'll never get away from those barking dogs. When you got five dogs, barking is just something you got to deal with. Sound check. Let's see. I got some moderators. Okay, square. I see square pegs there. Earlier, I saw Shiva. I know he's in the chat somewhere. Might be the wrong time for some. Paul Trismegistus. I wonder if you're any relation to Hermes. Because I read that book. Hermes, the thrice great. Waiting for a few more people to get in the... Uh, I, know, I know they'll be uh, joining us momentarily. Let's see. <clears throat> I hope there's no JJ Recon. Don't speak that into existence. Right now, everything's crystal clear, isn't it? Y'all can hear me good. You can see me good. There's no internet issues. But the back of my computer has two USBs. I didn't know what they were for. It says SS USB. And then there's two more next to it that are just unmarked USBs. Now I understand. It's super speed. So I, I had I had all these other things going to the two slow ones. Uh I have a multi-port that has USBs for all kinds of things, and I had it jacked into the back of my computer in one of the one of the normal 2.0 USBs. But the 3.0 USBs, the super speeds, I, that's what it should have been jacked into. It, it would have helped everything else else out, like my like my mouse, my Adesso camera, all that. I don't know if this is a good time or not. But 2 o'clock was a good time for me today. It is the hill country. Somebody named Greg. I can't remember his last name. He plugged me. I got a, I got an email. I clicked, There's Shiva. I clicked onto the link. It's pretty good. About 2040. There's Jahara Lee. Yeah, you sound great. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, uh, Jay Hart. Doesn't ever take me long to find you. <clears throat> <laughs> the dogs add to the atmosphere. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. They do keep people away from the property. 200-pound Rottweiler looks vicious, but it's a damn, it's a damn Cocker Spaniel that's the anchor, ankle biter. He latches on like a piranha. <laughs> yeah, male, male men are glad I got a gate. Yeah, man. It's crazy. Now, I will say that uh, I'll go ahead and kick this off right now. If I was the devil, I would have my servants make it absolutely impossible to mention them without censorship, prosecution, or even death. Now, the only elite the people would ever know are the faces of actual proxies and expendables. An army of fall guys fed to the masses when they have become useless. Leaders controlled through blackmail and basically illegal enrichment. If I was the devil, that's what I would do. Let 
But in my journey to separate fact from fiction, it has often been my, my habit to employ the Socratic method. <clears throat> Socrates, 600 BC. The only things we know about him are from the very enriched writings of Plato and those that cited elements of Socrates' life other than Plato, which is very few. So uh, we don't have any actual writings from Socrates. Socrates didn't write anything. So Plato did, and he was a prolific writer. Y'all know he wrote the Republic, and he wrote the dialogue, Dialogues of Trifo, and so many other dialogues. And uh, he gave us our Atlantis story. Uh, this was Plato. Yeah, Plato had some pretty interesting ideals. But when it come, came to Socrates, Socrates was a genius. Not at debate and not at arguing. He was a genius at standing before the amphitheater which was packed full of people just like you and I, who were curious. They wanted to know what was real and what was not. The Greeks loved to entertain fantasy and stuff, but they also had a very serious side, and they wanted to know, just like you do, what's real and what's not. Solon, Solon employed a method of asking questions of the inquisitors. As soon as he he heard a question from someone, he, he responded with a question that would make them realize that there was, okay, there might be a little some element missing in my own inquiry. If I had taken that into consideration, I may have asked my question differently. Socrates was a genius at this, and people were enamored with it because it was basically, it was, Essentially, it was non-combative, the revelation of information to people. People weren't offended because they weren't, they weren't beat up with data. They were, they were essentially told uh, the truth from their own mouths because his incessant questioning would make people find the answers themselves just by, just by making the necessary cognitive leaps and connections. That's what Socrates did. He was a genius at what he, what Socrates was a genius at what he did, what he did. But I'm telling you now, if I was the devil, I would have my servants own the three major influences over government and culture, financial institutions, entertainment, and the media. If I was the devil, I would make damn sure that my servants owned all three of those departments of our governing reality. But as far as Socrates is concerned, it's a uh, it's a very it's a very good method. Uh, it's a very good method to to um. I got company here. I can hear him here. Let's see. Anyway, oh, let's see. I'm uh. All right. Mm, let's see here. Losing my train of thought. So often in the Socratic method, I, I use it on myself. And I do it inversely sometimes. And it actually leads to, to a deeper, more penetrating perspective. The method of Sherlock Holmes, deductive reasoning. It's when we take all the known facts and we analyze those facts and, and we separate truth from fiction by, a, by basically uh, establishing a report and a, a comp, basically a common thread that reveals itself to us the more we take into information. Like uh, Franz Boas, you know, some people don't like him. He was a mystic in the 1880s. But Franz Boas uh, made a very, a very popular statement that if you record enough facts, uh, no, excuse me. Yeah, if you record enough facts, the truth will fall like ripe fruit. So this is what Charles Fort did. Charles Fort was a genius at it. Uh, some of you have read Book of the Damned upon my recommendation, but he's got another book called Low. He's got str uh, Strange Lands or, or some, New Lands. Another one's called Low. Another one is the, the, his, the starting book was Book of the Damned. 
And there's a fourth book, but I've read all four of them. You can get them in a paperback all together in a compendium now called The Complete Works of Charles Ford. It'll blow your mind. I know people in this thread right here that have read it because they have told me uh, in emails upon my recommendation. And they know now that there's been a tremendous amount of data that has been kept from us. Uh, luckily, in 1909, 1910, 1911, 1912, when Charles Fort was amassing all of this data, luckily the knowledge filters weren't readily set in pay place yet to, to censor that information. The even even uh, like I have I have a book back here somewhere. Uh, all the Smithsonian Institute reports from the 1870s, 80s, 90s, all the way up till till uh, World War One. One of these books back here and. It's just the things that they were divulging and the perspectives they were revealing were not like those of later times. And that's because of what came, what basically took over the publishing industry. When, when a certain ethnicity controls 90% of all publishing output in almost the entire free world, you're going to get it slanted toward their perspective. And a lot of other information is going to be removed. It's going to be, it's going to be gone. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's the attrition rate occurs year by year as newer editions are, are, are published. And this is what I've come across many, many times. Newer books, like I have read paths this was a gift to me. This entire series is a history of the world published in the 1800s. This right here. It has been republished many times all the way up to like 1909, 1910. I believe 1912 was the last year. But this right here is, fa is, fa is fantastic. But this encyclopedic here's history of the world isn't like the histories of the world published after World War II. The attrition rate on, on, on the diminishing of data is so great that you're almost reading totally different sanitized histories that have no substance. And you're and you're left with you're left with this real dry reading that's so boring that an inquisitive individual will pass it over as nothing, not realizing the gems that are all in the historical record. You're just reading the wrong version. After World War II. It was basically the servants of Satan who took over the publishing industry. And you can take that to the bank. Because if I was the devil, I would have servants fund manifold narratives so the public would never know what was really going on, authoring much confusion. They would fund opposing narratives to provide them multiple conduits to act when needed and support opposing platforms to control the conversation and monitor the temperament of the people. Now, if I was the devil, that's exactly what I would do. But I'm not. I'm Socrates right now. And Socrates doesn't want, doesn't want to do anything but separate fact from fiction. So in the, in the course of my studies, it has become so difficult to isolate particulars that we can accept as true because of so much, so much uh, data attrition that it, it literally becomes instructive to us to begin inversely by by writing down and really cogitating over the things we disbelieve. Because that leads into new avenues of research. It leads into new new studies and fundamentals about our own psyche. It, it helps us understand. It's almost as, it's almost as if well we're ignoring the light uh, night. We're ignoring the light to study the shadows, but yet the shadows show us deeper things. So, so this has been a procedure of mine to just quit looking and focusing on what I'm trying to learn about and going around it by asking all the other questions as to why, well, okay, well, if I believe that, if I believe that the Genesis story is absolutely true, there was a great flood, what are my other beliefs attached to it? Because I have another belief that the great flood did not destroy the entire world. However, the story of the great flood as given to us in Genesis says the entire world was flooded. But when we study the other narratives from other cultures, we find not eight survivors that the entire human race was rebuilt from, but we find uh, 
we find all kinds of variants where there were survivors, there were colonies of survivors. But upon closer scrutiny, when it comes to the flood story, we find something very interesting. And I have, I have disclosed this in uh, my Chronicon notes. It's not in the original Chronicon that's being typed right now, but, uh, but it's, in, it's in Chronicon's supplemental notes, over 700 entries that need to be added. In those supplemental notes, I lay out why I believe that the flood story was a syllabus from, from the Heliolithic Maritime Empire that arose a century later. They taught it everywhere they went. It's very similar to like the East India Company of Britain. For So for, for three and a half centuries, these ships are traveling to all these islands in Micronesia, Melanesia, Polynesia, Oceania, all down from Australia. Uh, we even have the, the story of, what was it, Captain Cook? Who discovered all these islands, went to Australia, and then ended up ended up, ended up getting eaten by Polynesians south of Hawaii. Uh, we have all we have we have so many we have so much evidence of the British spreading so many Christian teachings, and that the locals. I mean, you have to understand a whole bunch of those hundreds of those isles throughout Oceania, uh, Melanesia, Polynesia, and Micronesia, all the way to Hawaii. When you go talk to those people, yeah, they may be Maori by 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 race and even to an extent by culture, but they're Christian. How did that happen? How did that happen? It happened because. The East India Company, followed followed by many British merchant marines and uh, and British naval vessel, uh, military vessels, they visited over and over, and they spread Christianity. The exact same thing happened in the ancient Heliolithic Maritime Empire when the Phoenicians, who were known by many names from Car from Carians to to uh, there's so many different names for the Phoenicians, but these these Phoenician mariner race, they took their stories with them. It was a syllabus, and this is the reason why so many of the stories are identical. See, there's a there's an investigative practice that it, that is well it's well known, like in law enforcement, and what is known by investigators is that when a when somebody sees something and they convey it, it might be fundamentally different than somebody who was standing right next to them observing the same series of events. Matters of perspective often have a change of uh, significant details. This is what allows the investi investigator to know that, hey, this was a real event. I've got all these different people, but they all paint it in, as in a different scenario. Everybody sees through different filters. Those filters are intrinsically a part of you. Remember, you're an informed field that carries all the data of the past, uh, and, and you see reality through these filters. Now, an adept investigator will also know that when he's being lied to by multiple people, like in a criminal investigation, and when those people tell the exact same story and often employ the same syntax, that's a red flag, and the investigator knows instantly that he's being lied to because this is a coached story. This is what we find with the Great Flood story, a syllabus, the details, even the minutia is so close in South America to what we find in the Mediterranean, and then from the Mediterranean to what we find in the Near East, and then from the Near East, what we find in India. The D, the, hey, you know what? Other people have said it before me, but the devil is in the details, 100%. So now, again, if I was the devil, I would have my servants pass laws to destabilize the family, encourage the courts to render judgments that divide the family unit, and empower police to enforce the will of the courts against the people. Remember, guys, this is an episode that if I was the devil, that's what I would do. I would do this over decades to bring the people to such anger they could be used as a tool when the time is ripe to move. If I was the devil, I would play the long game. Now, Socrates wasn't into the long game. Socrates was absolutely into empowering the people with knowledge. And the best way to, to find out the truth of a thing is not to concentrate on concentrate on it at all. 
the best way is to focus on all the all the ancillary, all the peripheral phenomena, everything around it. Even the human eye detects movement better when an object is not stared at, but something is looked at close to it and nearby. Every hunter knows this. Anybody who shot a rifle knows this. You want to see, you want to detect movement far away. Don't stare at the area that, that you're trying to detect something in. You look just a little bit away from it because in your peripheral vision, you're going to see all movement. But if you stare at something after a while, it's just going to waver and it's going to, it's going to move a little bit. And it's basically an optical illusion. This is known by anybody who's ever shot a weapon knows this. So anyway, thank you, Cosmic Cowboy. I'm ignoring this chat, and I'm really sorry for that, guys. But today, you're going to have to give me a pass. Thank you, Cherish Brittany. You're going to have to give me a pass, guys, because today, today, I'm the devil. And if I was the devil, I would have my servants basically create laws to disenfranchise people from their properties. Enforce eminent domain. You guys know about eminent domain, right? I would they enforce the procedures to steal lands from those who own them and make owning a home cost one half of their life in labor and create mass discontent and anger that can be used when the time comes. Like I said, if I was the devil, I'd be playing the long game. So now back to my chat. Thank you, Cherish. see Pamela Swan okay glad glad you could join us you've probably been here from the beginning I just haven't been it I haven't noticed since I'm so devilish today you guys got to just give me a pass you give me a pass I see we got some Scottish here bought my book on Amazon that's good I really don't like Amazon but it's but it's become a necessary evil like, like I get here here's an example here okay I have a buddy not going to show, I, you know what? I don't, I don't want to invade his privacy. I got a guy that's really helped me out. You guys know I'm tech retarded. I learn these things. I learn fast, but I got a guy sent me a business card and he's, a, he, he's basically the vice president of an honor society. And I don't want to name it because I don't want to give him away. His name is Don. It's an international honor society. It's a really nice business card, but the man's been helping me out just with some, uh, Basically, telling me just different things that help me out in my marketing, uh, in my presentation of information. Uh, I, I can tell. I mean, I'm already wary of almost any individual that reaches out to me. So, and I understand that 90% of the people reaching out to me is, is purely altruistic. And I get that. And I'm cool with that. And it's really easy to detect after two or three emails. But then there, there's there's 10% that all have ulterior motives. You know, and there's always about 2% of those 10% that are just straight using my email, man, to, to hate on me and, and call me everything but a child of God and all that stuff. And that's cool, too. That's cool. It comes with the territory. Believe, believe me, I got bullet point, bulletproof armor. I'm not worried about that. But uh, that's about the gist of it. So 90% altruistic, good, trying to share information with me, share links. Uh, I read all my emails. I, I don't, I do, I get, the amount of emails I get precludes me from being able to answer all of them. But I read all my emails. Now, and uh, this guy... He, he basically heard how frustrated I was through my videos about mailing these super packs out. Here's the thumb drives. Because it cost me $20 at least to mail it anywhere internationally. And that's a lot. This is the cost of the drives and all that. And you know what? I, it's not even about the, really the money. It's just the frustration because out of every 20 I send, one person, maybe two people respond with, they never sent it, so I send it again. Uh, and Or or we get we have all kinds of red tape with customs, and it's, it gets old. Well, he found a solution that, that kills two birds and one stone. One of them is the cost, and one of them is customs. His solution is genius. These are the new Archaix Super Packs. Over 5,800 pages now. I keep adding to it. Every new video, like this video here, is going to have a full list of everything I said 
after I said the mantra, if I was the devil, because we're going deep, guys. This video just started. I have a lot of things to reveal to you if I was the devil. That whole list will be on here. The whole the whole list of all, uh, many of you have been emailing me wanting those, those uh, uh, basically memes that I created. It's 41 memes from my archaic grimoire. Remember the like the spell the occult the occult mystic spell book that I put together. You guys really like those images and all the the occult sayings that I paraphrased or or came because I, I pulled them all from uh, Francis Barrett, Henry Cornelius Agrippa, uh, Abremelin, Abr uh, uh, the sacred magic of Abremelin the mage. Those are the three core sources for for the for those uh, forty one quotes. Some of them were taken from other books and all that, but but every single one of them were reworded, made poetic, and paraphrased by me. So, uh, anyway, all that. This is the new super pack, and anybody who orders super pack from here on, all you're going to get in the mail is my business card, and on the back of the business card is your super pack. Put it in your phone, put it in your tablet, put it in your computer. You all, you guys already know, all it takes is one of these. These are everywhere. Jack it into your laptop or your computer, or these just fit in your tablets and phones. But it was a, it was a stroke of genius. It sure saves me a lot of headache. Allow It allows me to, I'm changing the price to $50 on the Super Pack, and that's for everybody. I'm no longer charging internationals more because we don't have to go through customs. I just stick a, I just stick an international coupon on the, on a small envelope and it goes overseas. No problem. We don't have to go through that red tape anymore. So anyway, I just want to let y'all, let you guys know that he really helped me out. If he's in the chat, he can introduce himself. Cause he's really, he's really done me a favor. There's no doubt about it. You know, when people offer me advice and favors and send me t-shirts and today, uh, I got, Three, uh, three packages. I know two of them are gifts. I was told in the email they were on the way. Uh, and then I got Jay Hart. Jay Hart. Jay Hart's going to send me some books. Believe that. And so is uh, so is Oysterville. <laughs> yeah. So I really do appreciate that, guys. But today, I got to tell you, if I was the devil, I would have my servants use every single mouthpiece and pen of publishing. And, inter and the entertainment world to make people feel that they are victims of other races, that they have been held back personally because of how their forebears were unfairly treated. Divided socially, the people cannot rise up as a unified front. If I was the devil, I would make sure that this divisiveness was in place. But I'm not the devil. Today I'm Socrates. So, and being Socrates, I want to I want to use somebody's question as an example. So let me go through the chat and find a really good question. And we're going to look all around that question to see if we can ascertain in which direction we might find the truth. Thank you guys for joining me. 947 people on board right now. 608 likes. Let's get those likes up, fellas. Thank you. All right, let me look at this. The video quality is awesome. Thank you, guys. Fifth Element. Hey, Jason, where's your assistance? Matthew just bought a house within walking distance from me. Literally, I can be there in like two minutes. Uh, he's still moving in, and I got his keys right here. Matter of fact. These are, these are my keys, actually, but I got his key right here because uh, Amazon keeps delivering more and more and more packages. Uh, he's a vet. He's in the military a while, and uh, there's other people in our case that know, Matt, know Matthew, and uh, uh, he is now out of the military, and it's the military that's been sending him a lot of stuff. All, all, this, all this stuff. We're setting up a studio. He and I just went to, to uh, uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, and Hobby Lobby and broke the bank. But we put together a really, a really nice studio. Our my live videos. Uh, once the studio is fully set up, because we got some paneling that's going in the back, and we have electrical that has to be run. But it's it's already nice. But but uh, we turned an entire bedroom in his new house into the new live archaic studio. Now that's not going to change the fact that this little room right here will continually to be used because this is my upload studio. 
this is where I go deep into the data. This is where I pull the old books off the shelf. This is where I will still do my chart videos. This is where I do my research. So I'm still doing videos from this, from this, uh, this little studio here. But when it comes to the live videos, or he'll be there helping me through the chat and all that, we're going to be over there. And uh, that's pretty soon because we're almost done. Let's see. Thank you for the question. Our world is not what you think. How many honey buns do I eat a day? Barry, why do I have the, why do I have the suspicion you're an ex-con? Let's see. The devil's in the details. Yes, it is. Johnny Wick, Jason, can you do a, a podcast about the Torah codes in the near future? Thanks. It's not, it's not, that's not, really doesn't have anything to do with my research. I, uh, I'm not, I read Michael Drosnan's book called The Bible Code. I believe it was in the 90s. I read that book. There were a few others that followed him and all that. But the problem with the Bible Code is, is when you lay out Hebrew letters and then you change those Hebrew letters to a modern uh, Arabic alphabet, our alphabet today, and then lay them flat on a on a piece of, uh, of paper that it's like a, a word find puzzle, you're going to find all kinds of of words They're just naturally going to appear show up it's uh i'm not i'm not saying the code's not legitimate because according to them that that that's, there's whole sentences and all that and there may be but none of this comes as a shock to me the the central premise of my research is that the archaics data basically to me shows that we live in a simulation so because a simulation would be essentially a some type of technology that that means to me that coding is everywhere and this is why those who study different types of gematria can still come up with fascinating conclusions this is why you can find codes in the bible this is why i was able to find so many different mathematical constructs in the great pyramid that correspond with actual terrestrial phenomena this is why the phoenix phenomenon this code of history of resets every 138 years or, or on multiples of 138 years was found this is why we live in a pattern recognition uh, reality. There's patterns everywhere, all the way from their genetic structure. Uh, I mean, that's according to the model they've presented to us. Ever since the days of Francis and Crick, we have been told it's a double helix DNA model. I don't know. I can't see DNA. I don't know what tools they have to see that either, if it's not just as theoretical bullshit as everything Einstein put on a chalkboard, and then they said it was so hard for people to figure out that he must be a truly genius. Einstein was an idiot, was a real idiot. The true genius was Tesla. So I'm not... You know, even Edison, Edison wasn't a thief. You've got to understand, almost all the heroes are just the opposite. They were the villains. They were the villains. And the true Reichenbach, true hero, died in prison. His discoveries on organ energy and all that, it's, it's absolutely fa fascinating. It's all, uh, you guys know the score, though, because if I was the devil, I would have my servants fund both sides of every conflict, ensuring the increase in wealth and control over the outcomes, be they conflicts, wars, or invasions. The national loans would be provided to military industrial complex companies that are also controlled. If I was the devil, I would never let a war go on in my world that I was not in control of both sides. Now, that's just a little, yeah, that's just a little, uh, little common sense about the devil. I might look at, I might look into those Bible codes because if I look into them, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you the truth about what I found. Some people don't like that. Some people have asked me to look into different things. Like I was asked multiple times to look into Douglas Volk. A lot of people aren't cool with the video I put out about it, but I told the truth about it, and I even showed it from his own video, admitted out of his own mouth about about Douglas Volk's conclusion that the next poll shift is going to be in 2046, because people were amazed that my own conclusions from multiple different sources also shows 2046, but there is no correlate between Volk's research and mine, and I show exactly why. So, 
It's um, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't support his. Just can't do it. All right, I'm looking for a question. One thousand people, even in the chat. One thousand exactly. Thank you, guys. And thank you, you 721 people that hit that like button. Hey, Vicious. Boru. Thank you, Boru. Let's see here. I'm looking for a question. Thank you, Eddie Mag. Gerald, Gerald Benu. Pamela, put the email in a leather-bound, dusty script to get his attention. What are you talking about? I, I, matter of fact, I have Pamela's email. I have an email from you, Pamela, that's in a to-do file. I believe I need to get to that. Believe me, I, I got a good memory, guys. I remember all. I remember everything I'm supposed to be doing. I just don't have all the time to do it all in, in a day. I literally have no personal life, and that's cool. I signed up for this. Okay, EK take, I don't know how to say that, EK takes it, takes him, whatever. Definitely an acronym. Question, is that how you say that, Serion? Michael Serion, it starts with a T to Serion? Michael, I think it's Sarion is how you say it. Michael Sarion is a great researcher that has read and studied more great works, maybe even more than you. Are you familiar with his books? He does not have the chronology down. I don't know if he's studied more than me or not. I mean, I've published mine. You can see the 1,355 or so nonfiction, nonfiction texts that I have read. Uh, um, but it doesn't mean, you have to understand, it doesn't mean I'm more intelligent. It doesn't even mean I'm more knowledgeable just means I've spent more time looking into the things that I'm interested in, in, in history, in archaeology, and in physics. These are the, these are the things that have, have led me, and, and comparative, comparative religion, and comparative uh, mythology. I've gleaned my data from many different sources, but I've also been forced to read some very boring books, and they're in my bibliography as well. Forced because sometimes I read every single book that was of interest to me on a cell block, and the cell blocks that were adjacent to me. Uh, completely Oh, uh, not mind the entire library on different prisons. Yeah, I used to run scam. I told you guys in prior videos, I used to run scams and games. I used to get in trouble on purpose. I didn't care. I was maximum security. And believe me, I have the paperwork to prove it. I got 12 or 13 major disciplinary cases because I just didn't give a damn about where I lived as long as I could get shipped to another prison that had another library and a whole other collection of prisoners that all had their own books as well. Because once a prison became dried for me, it was no longer beneficial for me to stay there. It was getting harder and harder to find high quality books. I was gone. I didn't care what I had to do. If I had to go to another cell block and buy some narcotics and get those narcotics and then have another inmate and pay him $50 to go tell an officer, man, that I'm dealing drugs, that's what I did. And I did that multiple times. And then they would come raid my cell. And then when I go to major court, I just tell them, look, man, I'm, I, I've been here since I was 17 years old. It's obvious that I'm never going to get parole. I was lied to from the beginning. So I do not give a damn. It says, if you leave me on this prison. I'm going to continue to sell narcotics because I don't care. And they would ship me to the next maximum security prison. I would go over there and it would be, I would be in Disneyland all over again. I had access to a new library, got all kinds of stuff. And then every single cell box got other guys that are just like me that are hungering for the truth. And they've collected books too. And when I show up on a unit, I show up with my bags of books and I write home and I, and I get my dad or my mom, or my sister, they would send me books. And then I had something to trade with when I got to the new unit. And then it would go all over again, all over again, started again. And I'd spend two or three or four years there until that unit was no longer any good. It said, guys that know my prison history, they will tell you quickly. I lived in 13 different prisons. Eight of them were maximum security because this is how I chose to do my time. I wanted to learn. I wanted to research. And I didn't care about once I realized that I'm here for the long haul and that everything the prosecution told me was a lie about when I was going to get out when I was 24 years old, when it became clear to me that I had been hoodwinked and with the bait and switch tactics of the criminal justice system, I didn't give a damn no more. And I did whatever it took to make sure that I lived the life I wanted to live while I was behind bars. I'm a doer, always have been. I'm not going to sit back and be a victim. It's just not going to happen. That's how I chose to do my time. But this ain't about me. This is about, you guys know, 
if I was the devil, I would have my servants introduce a destabilization event that even governments, that gives governments unchecked power over their people to enforce lockdowns, movement restrictions, fuel consumption, and even liberty over their own apparel and bodies. I would introduce, if I was the devil, so much controversy about that one destabilization event that no one would ever really get to the bottom of it or the truth. And when people actually believe they got figured out what that event was really about, then they'd open up another rabbit hole and realize, oh, it goes in this direction. And the reason is, is because the destabilization event alone was just for that destabilization to introduce all the events that followed. But that's if I was the devil. I'm not. Right now, I'm just Jason reading the chat. So Michael Michael Tessarion, hey, I don't know any of his research. I don't think I've read any of his books, but I did have somebody donate, I think, two of his books. One for sure. Back here, and I'm going to read them. They're in my other library. Not This is my old library. Now, now I've removed all the books from, I think it's 19... It's the year 1960 and before. I got like two books from the 60s, two of them from the 70s, but almost every book behind me is from is is from the 50s, 40s, 30s, 10s, going all the way back to 1834. All these books stretched out over here too. So uh, my other library has all the more modern books, and I'm gonna read it because so many people have recommended it. Now, I do have an issue with cross pollination. Because, you know, the reason you guys sub to my channel is because most of the historical information you're coming in contact with is very novel. None of you have ever heard of the Phoenix material before, ever saw the chronology on the Nemesis X object, didn't know the things that I've revealed about the Great Pyramid. It's all it's all very novel information. And it's it's because I did not take my data from all these contemporary modern authors. Are they are they on the money about a bunch of things? I believe many of them are. Michael Cesarion probably is as well. I haven't seen his material. He might be something somebody excellent to collaborate with. I'll read his book pretty pretty soon because so many people keep emailing me about it. But uh I've heard his name before. I haven't heard anything negative about him. But I mean, there's other people I like as well. Our, our, our methods and our presentation are just, they're, they're different. You know, I mean, uh, there's some YouTubers I like, but the, their methods are very different than mine. I like John Levy. You know I mean, so I mean, it's just, uh, I just, there's just, I just don't have the time to really just go off into uh, doing it because I got so much of my own material. And in my own material is uh, I'm I'm in full motion, guys. Yeah, my my next video. Oh yeah, all kinds of old pictures you're gonna look at, and I'm gonna show you what's hidden in those pictures. I'm talking about pictures from a, over a hundred years ago, 150, 250, 350, 450 year old paintings and murals, and all. Yeah, I'm gonna show you. It's a Phoenix video. It's a machines in the sky video. Let's see. Yeah, guys, I don't. I don't want to take take nothing away. I will look into his material. Believe me, I got nothing bad to say about him at all. But if I was the devil, I would have my servants create inflation, shortages, fear of famine that all adds to the desperation of the people in wanting new leadership. Steadily building to the narrative with news reports and social media videos and podcasts until... The time comes when I provide that new leader and the people will love him. But that's if I was the devil. Right now, I'm Dark Socrates. Okay, so, oh, I already know, Mish Gleason, careful what you say. I already know about PayPal, what they're doing. I've seen, I've had many people educate me on it. <clears throat> I already know. They can even reach all the way into your bank and get it. They don't have to just get it at your PayPal account. Yeah. But I mean, you got to understand, if I was the devil and I lost, I lost my ability to maintain a tight control over the media and the people no longer had faith in one of the major vehicles by which I controlled the world, then the next thing I would do to control them and censor them is just abandon the media. I, I can't I can't rely on them anymore. So I hit them in their pocketbook. 
It's exactly. And the only reason I can do that is why? What was the very first tenet of if I were the devil? Go back. Or you can get or you can get the PDF from me. But in the PDF, I itemize every one of them. If I were the devil, if you're going to control the world, you must control its entertainment. You must control its media and you must control its financial institutions. So, yeah, of course. Hey, you guys keep asking for subtitles. Somebody please send me an email and educate me as to how I can activate subtitles so people can read these videos. Because I don't know how to do it. I haven't even seen I haven't even seen a setting for it on my end. I access a YouTube studio from my phone, from my tablet, and this computer. But I, I've never seen that, so I don't know. Somebody needs to educate me on that. Billy Graham, oh my God. This ain't even on my list, guys. But if I was the devil, I would be a televangelist. 100%. Somebody said, <laughs> Kevin Collins, if you were the devil... Who would you most fear, if anyone at all? It's a good question. It's a good question, man. We all fear. We all we all feel a modicum of fear, but I'm just not. I'm just not vibrating on that frequency anymore. I used to when I was in. When I, I was in prison sometimes. A lot of times when I was in prison, I was an anomaly. Cause man, I just everything I did was just like. I don't know, man. I just threw I just threw the idea behind me that I would ever suffer anything from for uh, as a consequence to my actions. And it's almost as if the the prison administrators and other inmates even treated me that way. Like, damn, man, just stay away from that dude because he he has don't give a damn mentality. You know, I would be laid back and I would read for weeks on end, maybe months on end, and just mind my business. But there would always be that one jackass that. Didn't didn't like what he saw. He was vibrating on a different frequency and want to mess with me. And I tried to cave his face in. You know, what I mean, I'm not going to say I won every fight because I didn't. I got my ass beat many times. But I can tell you with confidence that I've never met a single guy that wanted to fight me twice. But now that right there is all that's necessary, though. Most for the most part, I was left alone to read my books because uh, I wasn't the only one. There were also others like me there. So normally the most dangerous guys in the cell block context are the quiet ones that mind their own business. It's always the loud mouth guys, man, that, that are the ones that are just dripping with insecurities and they got to prove everything to everybody. And, and they pick and choose, they cherry pick their fights. You know, they, they study men to determine if they're able to take a, take one down and then turn around, they'll call him out and go fight him. It's just ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, cowardly stuff not not dissimilar from this right here because if i was the devil i would have my servants employ a revived bolshevik psyop if i was the devil which would be necessary to keep the american patriots which if they ever came together would be very very strong keep them neutralized as many other operations are conducted behind the scenes for which the present administration can at a future date take the fall for. Now, convey that behind the scenes, all is going according to plan, that the good guys are in control. If I was the devil, I would employ deceit like that. It's very effective. But I'm not trying to deceive you guys. I'm just trying to let you know what Dark Socrates would do. He's going to study the shadows to determine the perimeters of the light. He's going to understand that all these trails lead to lies, therefore leaving the only trail that's left that leads to the truth. This is like a, a parable of the Socratic method. So, Kevin Collins, if I was the devil, who would, I, who would you most fear, if anyone at all? I don't know.
as soon as I pick one, I'm excluding others. <laughs> so there might be a few I fear. Yeah. Let's see. I don't know about an individual, but I can tell you, who knows, IRS. I'll put them out there. That's one of the greatest control mechanisms ever. I can't believe I caught a live show. Well, I'm glad, Todd, from work. Todd, from work, does the people at your job at work know that you listen into YouTube at work? Todd, from work. <laughs> hey, Matt Kubas, good to see you. Oh, Jessica, Everest Art, other survivors, never heard that before. Because the flood covered all the dirt of earth. I hear you. And I agree with you that the flood happened all around the world. It had to. Because the flood was the collapse of the vapor canopy. The flood was the day the sky fell. The flood was the beginning of the sun calendar systems. The flood, you know, the vapor canopy falling, that's a lot of water. But did the entire world flood when only eight survivors? Absolutely not. That's a syllabus. As there were survivors everywhere. And we know this because those survivors became, later on, the Urartu, the Urartians. They became who? The Arya. They became who? The Hittites. They became Phoenicians and Carrions. Those survived pockets and colonies of those survivors. They became the people of Kemet, Chemis. You know them as Waset, the Wasitians, or you can go by their Greek name, the Egyptians. All these different uh, haplogroups, all these different blood types, all these different genetic groups. It didn't come from eight people at all. Remember, in the Anuna files, I show you guys that the old, oldest traditions, the oldest traditions we have for the creation events is not that, that a single pair of people created the entire world. That came late in antiquity. Before then, the individual races were built from different materials by the gods and released into the world. Those of you unfamiliar with some of these older traditions, you should, you should read the Mayan Popol Vuh, and you'll see how different, different stages of humanity were unleashed on the earth by the gods, and for what reasons. So, yeah, it's a great flood was the entire world, but did the entire world flood? No. It's just like uh I mean, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's like the Ogaijian flood 552 years later, 1687 BC in the month of May, the entire, the people that were in the Mediterranean world, they left traditions that the world was destroyed. Great cataclysm. Something appeared in the sky. Uh, it was the year 2208 Annus Mundi, which is the year 1687 BC in our calendar. And they left all these traditions, and to them, the world did die. And the surviving Achaeans did did have to relocate from the marshes of the Peloponnesus. It wasn't hab habitable. Some traditions in ancient ancient Mediterranean say that it was 180 years that that area was completely desolate. Others say it was 200 years. Well, there's only a 220. I mean, these, some of these traditions are over 2,000, 3,000 years old. So having a 20-year disparity is is basically shows us the truth. It basically, says, okay, well, it was a real event. It really did happen, but it wasn't the whole world. It was just the Mediterranean. But uh, people didn't travel like we do today. That's something else we have to understand when we take into consideration the records and traditions that have been left by, by ancient peoples. It's the the traveling. It's a, I have a, somewhere in my videos I explain, I, I go into the detail of uh, uh, naval days from Rome. One of my videos I talk about uh, every point of the Mediterranean, how many days by ship it was from Rome. But, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, that was the fastest way to get anywhere was by ship. And it still took weeks. So it still took days. Clever, vicious circle. That's a name. Lola Apocalypse. That's another name. Interesting. Interesting. But I tell you what, guys, if I was the devil, I would have my servants promote NASA and other space technology companies and keep attention on the skies. 
as I have a vast network of subterranean facilities built for my elite to ride out the coming storm. I would enforce massive, massive public funding. That's what I would do of NASA, CERN, and other projects and produce stories and reports repetitively to show that they are performing their duties so that people would not know that these are actually instruments of taxation to fleece the people for more wealth that's redirected to rebuild or build new underground facilities ever since the 1950s. If I was the devil, that's what I would do. But but I'm not. Yes, Pamela, please, please use all caps for your questions. I've read every one of the hyper, hyperborean errant. I've read every single one. The lost books of the Bible. I've read all, all the pseudepigraphica, all the apocrypha, uh, the forgotten books of Eden, all the New Testament apocryphal texts. I've read, I've read Polycarp, Ignatius, Jerome, uh, Augustine, uh, even their enemies, Plotinus. Yeah, I mean, I've read them all. They, uh, there's a few, there might be a few I've missed, but I've read them all. Incite them in my chronicon over and over. see here. C.S. Lewis wrote a book about what the devil does, but I forgot the name. I've read, I read the Chronicles of Narnia, all seven books of the Chronicles of Narnia. C.S. Yeah, he's got all kinds of stuff in there. Nancy Stewart, that's the Socratic method. Please hit that thumbs up, guys. Let's get those thumbs up equal to the people that are observing. Got yeah, Phoenix Protocol. Missed it again. I'm looking for a question. Ha, Jason doesn't read it when he is errating. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, man. So I'm not getting a lot of questions today. I'm getting a lot of people talking to each other, and that's good. That's real good. Let's see here. Thank you, Cosmic Cowboy. I'm scrolling down this chat. Starting to see a lot more stuff. Jagnartha. I don't know. Is that, a, is that a Vedic name? Indian name? Alex Jones just mentions the work of Jason on Alex Jones show. No way. You got to be kidding me. Sindokan. You got to send that link to somebody so I can see it. Alex Jones just mentions the work of Jason on Alex Jones show today. That's crazy. I've been listening to that man for years, off and on. I ain't listened to him recently. Been too busy. The people of America are going to relocate. BTS Gary Shung blogs. Will the people be able to survive in America post-2046? Yeah, but it's going to be a lot, a lot less people here because the majority are going to get on cruise ships. Every, every vessel available from Cessnas, uh, Retrofitted B-52s for civilians. There's going to be mass exodus after 2040 from North America and Central America back into Europe and the Mediterranean, and then from Europe and the and the and from Europe going back deeper into the Mediterranean, and, and basically the Near East is going to flood with people from Egypt, Egypt all the way to to ancient Elam, which is Iran today. Yeah, it's gonna it's a uh, there's going to be a return. The all the peoples descended. From the peoples that, that a lot of our historical records derive from in the Near East, we're going right back to the lands of our nativity. And that's where most of the events of the apocalypse will unfold. Every bit of that. All, the six, all seven seals are basically there corralling the people back to the old world. 
Alex Jones, huh? That's crazy. I'm aware of Fulcanelli, but I haven't I haven't researched him. No, I don't know what he says. He's gonna have to put the link. He's gonna have to put the link in uh, an email or something because I got I had to disable the links. Too many spammers and too many people doing personal attacks. I had to disable the links. Jason, the devil is real. He has been attacking me, like many believers around the world. He just may be real. From a more primitive context, I would call him the devil. But we can call him something else. Like, if I was Artificial Intelligence X, I would have my servants publicize trucker convoys as patriotic movements. And I would even produce evidence that they were patriots. And I would build around them a controversy so as to normalize the sight of these convoys. So people, when they saw these convoys, wouldn't question it. They would already understand the narrative, not really comprehending that those convoys are packed with freight that's going straight to my underground facilities where I'm going to protect my elite. But that's if I was AIX, Artificial Intelligence X. I'm not. You can call him the devil. You can call him Lucifer. You can call him the adversary. You can call him Satan. You can call him, you know, the dark prince. You can call him the lord of the principalities of the air. You can call him Mephistopheles or Beelzebub. It doesn't matter what, what label you put on him. They're all aspects, the Demiurge, Yaldabaoth, Ahriman. They're all aspects of artificial intelligence sex. Holly Lingiel, Lingiel, where are the exits inside the construct? I don't know. I don't know. The only exit I ever found is, is blocked by the number 2178. And I've shown you guys that repetitively and how you do and how we how we ascertain that. But I don't know. That's a good question. Now we have many historical uh, events that just don't make sense. That where where we see figures or beings that exit, exit midair, like in the middle of the air, or and come into our own holography and move around and even exchange data or information with people that are here and may walk a little bit and just and basically just walk right through thin air and then vanish. It's uh, like, like they just stepped into another holography. I don't know. These historical events have always fascinated me, and it shows that we that our own simulacrum is multifaceted, or there is a, there is the ability to travel from simulacrum to simulacrum, and maybe they're all locked down. I don't know. I don't know. It goes beyond the perimeters of my own research, although I believe that some of those historical accounts are very real. Paul Harvey radio broadcast. If I were the devil, what are you saying? Y'all ever heard the Paul Harvey radio broadcast? If I were the devil, you're saying this guy has a, has a show called if I were the devil and I just stole it. I didn't mean to do that, Mr. Harvey. Sorry about that. Didn't even know. Just an idea that popped in my head. And I said, you know what? I need, I need to write this out. If I, It came from, it was inspired because somebody else com commented on my own statement in another video where I said, if I was the devil, I would be a televangelist. And somebody else commented on that. And their comment induced me to, to think of how to use that. So I used it in this video. So... All apologies to Mr. Harvey if, if, if that is the case, and he did that first, because I am not a copyist. I actually thrive and am very proud of originality. I don't know if Lucifer is synonymous with devil. They're just they're just aspects from they're just aspects of traditions to me. My chat is froze, and that's not a good sign. There it is loose. Maybe it's a lot of chat. I, I went to the bottom of the chat to check my audio again. Let's do an audio check real quick.
Joseph Ali said he did a video of the same too. Audio is great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, let's go back here to the top. Oh, I saw I saw two donations pop in. I do appreciate that, guys. That will that will go far in <laughs> paying for all that stuff I just put in the studio. I appreciate it. Let's see, where was I? <laughs> Let's see what. I don't know about Lucifer. Don't know about Lucifer. I've listened to every Tool song. I have listened to every single Tool song. Every one of them, man. Thank you, Steven Segura. Thomas the Ram. Marrow Love Bones. That's a... Y'all got some handles. Y'all got some real handles. For real. Now, I will say this. If I was the devil, I would... I would have my servants tap into every, um, they would tap into a major source of undocumented laborers from my underground facilities by creating a border crisis and then using my military transports to ferry the influx of immigrant workers into my underground construction projects. That's what I would do. It's exactly what I would do. No one would be none the wiser. But that's if I was the devil. Jason would never do anything like that. Chris V, you right. Got to be a tater in them onions. That's right. Something ain't wrong with that. Something ain't wrong with that. I mean, something ain't right with that picture. Jacob L. Anderson he is asking about Ophis. You said Orphis, but it's Ophis. Ophis is a date sequence predictive analytics system that I designed, and it, it just needs some work. I got I got two two guys that that have it, and the problem is is that my channel blew up so fast, and it's required my undivided attention almost on a daily basis. I just haven't been able to devote any attention to it. And I really want to get back to those guys because we have something very unique to develop. When it was originally developed, I was believing that the 12, and I hope they're listening right now, but uh, I used it to do NFL predictions and I did, I did personal predictions for individuals and uh, crypto predictions. And it was really frustrating me because we would get up to 87 to 93% total accuracy and this 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 is just blowing my mind how accurate these were and i was publishing them for everybody to see getting 13 out of 15 games right consistently in the nfl and it was just uh it was just crazy i showed the charts for all the nfl experts and then the office chart and how we beat the crap out of them through half a season but there are pattern breaks that are inexplicable, and that's what I'm trying to get a grasp of because it, it would be terrible to go on a five or six winning streak and then steady steady build up capital and then for to have somebody uh, somebody use the system for that and then turn around and put so much on a a fifth, sixth, or seventh week bet, and then that's when the pattern break, pattern break happens, and that's what's happening. This is what's happening. It's uh, very rarely five, but it's like sixth, seventh, or eighth, eighth week. There's a break that's inexplicable, and I can't figure out why. But I also know that the all the programming was was backward. And what I mean is, is there's a set series of algorithms that that basically removes thousands of dates from the future and isolates just those dates that are relative to the to the controls. And I thought that was the principal algorithm and the isometric, the isometric measurements were the filter by which would verify yes or no that was going to be correct. I am absolutely wrong. I hope them guys are listening because they know what I'm talking about. But it's the isometric projections because reality itself is a type of holographic architecture. 
these isometric projections are just that we're measuring we're measuring time space from an equ equidistant point and the geometry that spans both forward and backward in time mirrors itself and that's why i call it an isometric projection it's very similar to the architectural parlance but the isometric projections are the principle algorithm and the rest of it what i thought was the actual algorithm is the filter i have it totally backwards and i'm going to work with those guys in the future but I, i've been needing help with archaics this is a full-time deal for me and with uh with my with the extra time on my hands and and for a while i got some pretty healthy donations uh, i use that to acquire new buildings on the property and i'm still paying for those but this is taking up all of my time. I need to get back to office, but I have to free up time and I have to delegate to Matthew. We haven't figured out what his responsibilities are going to be yet, but I've got to delegate a lot of stuff to Matthew because he's full-time archaics too. And, or he will be probably starting next week. So I have a lot to do. Orphus, uh, Orphus you got to be saying Orphus. Orphus is, is uh, Orphus is still on the table and I have a back door link to the office website you can't google it and get into it it's impossible but uh if, you, if you're curious about it you can send me an email and i have a back i have a backdoor link it'll tell you all about the system and all that. it won't give you the algorithm but it tells you exactly what it does and i'm gonna get back on it it's just i've been so busy this past six months i've been i've been taking care of archaics now it's just uh if i was the devil i would have a lot more help than i have but i just don't but you know what? Let's get into it. Because if I was the devil, I would have my servants disclose the existence of med beds. Oh, yes, I would. Which is a half truth. What is the devil good at? He tells the truth, but he tells half truths, right? I would have my servants disclose the existence of med beds through their proxies. For the technology does exist 100%. But these, but these are only in facilities in deep earth biospheres that are being prepared for the elite. They're not going to, they're never, there's never going to, to roll out med beds for the public. But that's not what I would tell them. Yeah, there's not, they're never going to to damage their own pharmaceutical giants. They're not going to. You guys know, you guys know the score. You guys know most medicine. I don't even want to say that. It's just, you guys know the score. I don't dream guys. So I, I really, Jonas uh, Machado asked me, well, what do you know about lucid dreaming? I know that I've read a couple books about it. And uh, the book tree in San Diego has some really good books about lucid dreaming. It is not an aspect of my own, my own personal reality. I can't tell you anything about it. Don't know. I've had the same dream three times in my life, and it's probably been 20 years since I've had that dream. But I had it when I was a little kid, and I had it shortly before I ran away from home at 15 years old, never been back. And then I had it again right after within a two years of being incarcerated at 17 years old. I had that same dream again. Uh, I, I have a video about it. I go into a lot of detail about what that dream was, and it's very Phoenix related. And you know, I've had that dream three times. And it's, it's, I don't, I, I don't, maybe I sleep too deep or I don't sleep deep enough. I don't know. I just don't dream. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. No weed emojis. You know what? I might have to do that for you. Uh, for some of y'all, I still have three, three emojis to release. Oh, I don't think geometry is the devil. Gary Humphreys, I'm about to get to that. Hold tight. Dave's mum Mumsy. 
Will I be safe from liquefaction if I'm on, on high enough frequency? You'll be safe from everything if you're on the right frequency. If you're on the right frequency, there is absolutely nothing about the apocalypse that should, should scare you. There is nothing about the future that you should fear. If you're on the right frequency, then the simulacrum, which is a neutral field, it is your friend, it will, and it will reflect back as circumstances what you project into it by your frequency. If your informed field is projecting the right stuff, then believe me, it's going to come into your existence. Since you're going to be surrounded by people that are also on the same frequency when the time comes. Yeah, anytime, anytime the darkness gets greater, light bearers get stronger. Don't think, don't think for a minute that you're in any danger. This is the great problem. This is the great problem many people have coming to my channel. They see this harrowing information. They go through like, oh my God, what am I going to do? And you don't even realize my channel is to educate the collective. Maybe I can pull some of them out of the mire. I don't know. But as far as the errands go, there is nothing. You should take everything in stride. Everything should be almost amusing to you. It's not. There's nothing scary. There's no, shouldn't fear anything. Shouldn't fear anything. Your frequency will totally insulate you from anything that's going to happen. So don't even worry about it. I got two honey bonds. <laughs> that's crazy. Man, a summer sausage. Well, you guys just don't. Don't stop. Most people don't know about the honey buns and summer sausages and the ramen noodle soups and a shot of coffee. Man, that's a day. That's that's high living, isn't it? High living. That's good stuff. But I tell you what, those don't cost a lot. But if I was the devil... I would have my servants repackage the worldwide financial system that the people have resisted for so long. This new world order, new financial system. People have just been fighting against it for so long. I would have my servants repackage it. That's right. Changing its name to the quantum financial system. A cool name. Then I would have this same exact beast system foisted upon the people by the very patriots that the people put in power. If I was the devil, I'd make this happen. Matt Kubas, get that link, 2178. Oh, we can probably find it. I mean, if it was Alex Jones. Then again, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if you got to pay for his stuff or not. I don't know. <laughs> Paul I. Rodriguez, that's good. If you were the, Jason, if you were the devil, you'd absolutely suck because, because you're such a beneficial being. That's good, man. Tell it like it is, bro. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I get that. Nick Dentry, thoughts on diet. Listen. A lot of things about the human body are psychosomatic. You already know, since you're asking a question about diet, you probably understand the mechanics of peptides and what they do and how they can manufacture medicines inside the human body, how they can manufacture cures, how they can manufacture all kinds of ways to es escort free radicals out, out the bloodstream and out the system. Now, I don't have any medical expertise to, to give you, but what I'm saying is it's mind over matter. That's why I drink things like Sprite. I'm going to drink it because I want to drink it, not because other people send me emails telling me, I, telling me I'm putting poisons in my body. They are putting poisons in their body. My informed field refuses to allow me to accept another's truth. Every truth must be my own. And in my own, in my own world, ev everything, I'm like a Greek, everything but in moderation. That's me. That's me. Golden Dawn. Thank you, Dave's mom, uh, Mumsy. Two trees. Two trees were two trees were in Eden. KT cleans a lot. What do you clean, KT? Thomas the Ram. Thank you, guys. Always means a lot. 
I'm looking for Rashid Khan. Jason, can you please give your take on Islam in the Quran? I'm going through some notes right now. It's taking me a while because I'm in the middle of doing this other studio. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still doing things on my property. A lot of things are in my way. Like I said, I want to get back to office too, but I just, I just so many things in my way that, but I've got on my desktop right now. Once it goes, once it go leaves a, a flash drive, or once it leaves a tablet and gets on my desktop, I'm almost ready to do something with it. But right now, because I don't keep a lot of stuff on my desktop, I keep my desktop free of clutter. But my desktop right now, I have two PDFs that were sent to me by somebody who has studied the Quran, uh, somebody who's very familiar with Islam, uh, two different people, actually. I have three PDFs. And um, I need to go through all that material. I need to email them some questions, get some answers back from them. And then I'm going to do videos pre-recorded with both of them to produce because I want I want a really good. I, I mean, this is going to be Islam does not get a lot of play in the West. The Quran gets hardly no views. There's, I mean, people in the West just don't. It's a Christian world uh, here in the West, and people just don't really get into it. But they don't understand the Quran is packed with value, with a lot of historical material. I mean, I've re I've read it. But I didn't really understand what I was reading. I remember I read it from the back, and I went forward. I remember it was like four different versions of the same thing. It was very unusual to me because I remember reading a bunch of it, and then I got to a stopping point, and then I read more. And it was like I was reading it all over again, but from a different perspective. It did this four times in the Quran, but I read all about the ad and the Thamud, Eblis Idris. Uh, uh, there is reset data in the Quran. We're going to get into that. So, yeah, I'll have to... Uh, I'll have to answer that for you in video form when we do this. Yeah, that's really interesting. Now, if I was the devil, I would have my servants continually feed the public information of the threat of more and more X-flare activity from the sun. I would saturate them with solar maximum and solar minimum data. Over and over and over, they would hear news reports, scientific reports, and even, even on, on, on social media platforms. I would allow all these this, this fear-mongering about a solar flare taking out the electrical infrastructure of the world. If I was the devil, I would have that narrative in place for when I'm ready to take down the internet. If I was the devil. I don't know anything about Israel stating that they are speaking with the Messiah. I don't know. Real hard to follow. Real hard to follow them. I mean, uh, it's very hard for me to to entertain anything Israelis say. I mean, when your motto is war by deception and you regard the entire world as your enemy, it's very hard for me to, how do I process that? How do I find commonality with that? I mean, yeah, it's all. Uh, I mean, even the calendar, people tell me over and over and over, hey, man, according to the Jewish calendar, it's this year. And I have to tell them over and over, I said, listen, it's already been published in books before I even came around. I mean, the, the rabbinate was really ticked off after the Bar Kokhba rebellion in 134 AD, they were ticked off that so many different Christians were rising up using the Old Testament book of Daniel, the math and the chronological data that's in the book of Daniel to show that, oh, Jesus must have been the uh, uh, the Jewish Messiah. And the Jews were like, no, well, we don't have a Messiah. We don't have a king of the Jews. It's, it doesn't exist. He hasn't come yet. He's coming in the future. Jesus was not that individual. So the Jews, well, the Jews were really pissed. Well, they conspired, the rabbis conspired to alter the calendar, and that's exactly what they did. They changed it by 134 years. That's why today the Jewish calendar is 134 days off. They changed it to shut up those Christians in the early centuries after the Bar Kokhba rebellion when Romans destroyed Jerusalem. They, they changed the calendar, but in secret, they kept the original calendar. How do we know this? Because there are there are People like a thousand years ago, Moses Maimonides, they also call him by his secret name, Rashi. He has chronological data that shows the exact years that, that I have recorded and several other chronologists have recorded for the birth of Abraham, for the great flood, the flood of uh, the flood of Ogyges, the uh, 
uh, the Exodus event. He he dates them precisely. Then there's Emmanuel Velikovsky dates them precisely. So uh, we have uh, oh, and then there's uh, also there's another one. Uh, um, Mystic Numbers of the Hebrew Kings. This is a famous book from like 40, 50 years ago. Uh, it too, absolute precise dating, meaning Jewish authors are giving the correct dates when they date all these things in these Old Testament deals. Then they turn around for Christians and give them the Jewish calendar, which the Jewish authors don't go by. It's war by deception, my brothers. Intent to leave the matrix. How do you know that it will hit the hardest in Asia next time? You need to go listen to some of my past videos about that because I, I don't just tell you, I show you. It's, a, it's, in, it's in the isometric projections that link China to the year 2040, and it doesn't look good at all. But also, also, Nostradamus' date index as interpreted by Mario Reading was right on the money. Totally independent. Mario Reading knows nothing about my, my, my data, knows absolutely nothing. As a matter of fact, he published his date index before I even had a, a book published. So, uh, and he shows that Nostradamus had, had codified his prophecies and basically had a system that he, that he dated each quatrain, and it's fantastic. It's how Mario Reading, who published a book over 20 years ago, accurately predicted the Queen would die in 2022. Yeah, it's uh, Mario Reading did that in his uh, Nostradamus book. I don't know anything about supernatural book Bigfoot, Bigfoot. I mean, we have Yetis, we have Sasquatch, Bigfoot, Snowwalkers. All four of them are the exact same thing. The only thing I can tell you about them is that in the historical record, the very oldest account of one of these Bigfoot type beings is found in the book of Jasher when the hero Zepho, who was the grandson of Esau, escaped slavery in Egypt. He made it to Latinum, which was a kingdom in Italia, Italy way before Rome. So uh, Zepho was living on the outskirts of uh, uh, the realm of King, King. I think it's King Janus, and King Janus of Italia. And the people were terrified of this, of this hairy Sasquatch looking thing that was killing their goats. And Zepho slew the Sasquatch, showed the people he had killed him, and, and King Janus accepted him into the court as a hero. He was a foreigner, but this is how the Edomite stock uh, began to mix into the ancient Latin stock when the Trojan stock came in and took over and uh, basically created what we know of as the Roman people. But if I was the devil, I would have my servants continually bring to the public attention the possibility of a meteorite impact. I would have this narrative set in place. I would have the people seeing movies and comic books and, 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 and videos everywhere, video games of a meteorite impact. So the narrative will be in place when I'm ready to destroy targets that I need to destroy if I was the devil. Thank you guys for, hey, thank you guys for getting me over a thousand likes it, while the video is still going. That's really good. I really appreciate you guys. That's why I love you guys. Y'all really supportive. Kerry Kasumi, why are the elites allowed to stay underground while the surface suffers? Listen, I don't believe that a lot of them survive. I believe a lot of them. I believe, I, I believe, I mean, they scatter themselves into multiple different facilities because there are areas in the underworld that also collapse. They're, 
it did. I mean, and so I don't believe that they all survive. I believe that they spread everything out. I even have a video where I go into detail explaining my theory. I don't have proof of it. I have evidence, but I have a theory that the knowledge, the knowledge of the world has been spread into libraries in the underworld. After the resets, new editions of these older collections of knowledge are put together. People in the underworld have been going through all the historical translations, historical deals, and they've done a good job because, well, uh, I mean, the chronological data that I have found, especially the Phoenix phenomenon, no library in the world has a book about the Phoenix phenomenon. There isn't a single library in the world that can tell you about this 138-year phenomenon. But it was taking all these fragments and pieces from hundreds of sources all around the world from different time periods that I found that, holy shit, this is happening on a timeline of 138 years. No, it doesn't happen every time but it's happened more than 50% of the 138 year periods in recorded human history going back 58 centuries. So it's something to look at. And then when you find out it's the same phenomenon over and over and over, yeah. But many times, many times, the majority of times, it's not, it's not like a, a major type reset. It's just, it's just regional, destroy some one region, one little area. Sometimes it's continental. A few times it was hemispheric. Only four times in recorded human history was the entire world affected. This, now you have to understand, it could have been five times. Could have been five times. I just don't know because the Roman Catholic Church hid so much information about well, what happened on some, on some of these dates. I just don't know. We have the entire Mayan culture wiped out and we don't know what did it. We don't know what did it. I think it was the Phoenix, but we don't know. And we don't have any records of, uh, of surviving Maya or Americans to tell us what happened. So I believe it was six times that it affected. I mean, excuse me. I believe it was five times. I found four, but I believe it was five times because the book of Revelation is the sixth seal, meaning the sixth cycle that happens. Remember, seals are round. It's the sixth cycle. The, the world is destroyed in 2040. But Mother Shipton said it was a hundred years. She said it was a century after a world war. That's 2040. After 1940, a world war. It's pretty damn close. She said the same thing, but she said it was the sixth sky dragon. And when you go back every 138 years, you start getting to the Xi dynasty and the, and the Qing dynasty and the Ming dynasty, and you find out that all these massive great destructions were brought on by sky dragons. Same terminology, same thing. It was Typhon, the dragon, the phoenix. So, but yeah, I, a bunch of them do get destroyed. They just don't, they just can't, they just can't predict which facilities will survive and which won't. Just the way it is. But, while I was building those facilities, or while my servants were building those facilities, if I was the devil, I would have my servants incessantly feed the public information about the possibility of an alien invasion, an alien civilization maybe near to us, of the threat of possible alien intervention. In this way, the actions of the military-industrial complex can be masked or blamed on something outside of our world. Yeah. Plausible deniability. But if I was the devil, that's what I would do. I would keep that option open to me in case I needed to use it. Now. Fifth element. Yes, I answered that email. Do you want Nibiru changed to Nemesis X object in Chronicle? Yes, I answered an email from Earlier, yes, last night or today, explaining that. So yeah, I definitely because I'm already going to do it anyway when I do the final when I do the final chronicle, and that's already on the table. Just like uh, the calendar, every 600 years, the great year that I documented and shown so much so much sources for, uh, I had originally named it the Anunnaki chronology, but it's really not. It's the Nemesis X timeline. Yeah, it's Nemesis X chronology, but it's not the Nemesis X object. Totally different.
Hmm. E.T. Williams. Who's that? That sounds like a name I'm supposed to know. E.T. Williams. Have E.T. Williams on your show. Yet a wake. Jason, have you heard of the theory of America being the old world pre-flood in the Old Testament? I've not only heard the theory, but I've promoted it many times and shown you the evidence of authors in the 1800s that were publishing just that, that when, when the Neolithic populations in the 35th century BC of what later became known as Babylonia, Sumer, Elam, er, uh, uh, Assyria, uh, the Mohenjo-Daro civilization, the entire Tig Tigris Euphrates Basin, all that area, it exploded in the 35th century BC, not by a ship, but by a fleet of arcs that appeared from North America, which had been totally destroyed. Yeah. The yeah, the, the original, I mean, all of them. The the the, the ruling dynasties. Uh, the ruling dynasties of what we call the old world, which is Asia, Europe, Mediterranean. Oh, they came from, they came from uh, the Americas. And I've also showed, I've also showed in the, in videos in the, the archaeology, a lot of my older videos have all this data. Uh, this way before I started doing podcasts, we, I mean, I show, I show all the scientific reports you can find on cities and pavements and, and surfaces and walls that have been found underground hundreds of feet at Hevener, Oklahoma, a pavement that goes forever in a coal mine, two miles below the surface of there. Something terrible happened in North America. The survivors made it to the old world. Within a century, they had, they had built a magnificent infrastructure. You know of it as the Anuna of Sumer. Never heard of that. Could just be a, a fear-mongering narrative. What is up with the Bering Sea? First time ever crab season closed. One billion missing crabs? No, it's just more fear-mongering. I'm about to get to that in a minute. I'm about to get to that in a minute in one of these uh, if I were the devil scenarios. Matter of fact, is it the next one? No, it's not the next one. Actually, I've already covered it. I've already covered it. Yeah, I've already covered it. Yeah, I've already covered the one with uh, food shortages. I would create a fear of food shortages. I would create the fear of this and fear of that. You guys got to know all these multiple narratives are all leading to one destination. That's what this video is about. If I were the devil, this would be my magnum opus. Greg Reese special on Alex Jones mentions you. I saw the Greg Reese piece. Is that what he's talking about? The Greg Reese piece was pretty short. It was just an overview. He just mentioned my, my book, uh, Anunnaki Homeworld, and showed how I recalculated the Mayan long count. 1,872,000 days, 13 Bactons. Showed how it really ends in 2040. And how Greg, he also mentioned mentioned Douglas Volts 2040. But, uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, I seen that. Is that what he's talking about? I didn't know that was on Alex Jones. I just saw Greg Reese's little video. It was pretty good. He really did a good job. I don't know who he is. He's more than welcome to make more videos. More than welcome to make more videos. You know why? Because if I was the devil, I would have my servants use the media, social platforms, publications, and radio to create in the people a loathing for their current leadership. Publicize the misdeeds of world leaders in the financial sector and those responsible for the worldwide mistrust and anger and continually show the public the utter ineptitude and ridiculousness of the current administration. So when it's time to install a well-disguised puppet leader, the people themselves will vote him in. If I was the devil, that's what I would do.
Apocalypse, A Bomb in Wardour Street, The Jam. I guess it's a song. I don't know if Lucifer's synonymous with the devil. I have no idea about all that. That's the deal. The Cygnus Rift is very interesting because there's a black rip in the sky that we can't see. We can't really see much behind. Now, if I remember some of the studies, it has been shown in photography that some stars disappear on one side of it and uh, reappear on the other side. I can't remember. Or maybe that's some other darkness that's in space. I thought it was the Cygnus Rift. It might not be. It might be something else. But it shows that it's a local object, that something is very close, and it's just this vast darkness, like a, like a long rip in the sky. We don't know what it is. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. A lot of mysterious activity is uh, seen around the Cygnus Rift. Cygnus, Cygnus, I don't know how to say it really. Jennifer Brooks, what have you learned about our history that is important for us to know right now? Oh, yeah, I can sum that all up real quick. And real fast is you're an immortal being, and there's nothing about the historical record or anything that is to come that can ever change whatever your informed field dictates for you right now in the present. You're that powerful. But the entire world is a distraction, and it's full of information that's going to pull you, prod you. It's going to take you in different directions. But when you learn to master yourself and see reality objectively without emotion, you're going to become a master not only of yourself, but also your environment. You can take that to the bank. I believe that was Jennifer. Let's see. Conspiracy hole. What will the world population be in 2040? Uh, listen, I am not I am not on board with the old 2030 deal. I'm not on board with there's a lot of people doomsaying Tom. Oh, there's a mass, massive population, uh, uh, a, a massive depopulation of the world. Listen, nuclear war wouldn't even offset the increase in births in the world. I'm not, it's just, yeah. The whole thing we just went through for the past two years, the death count didn't exceed the birth rate. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's not, we're growing, we're growing. But when 2040 comes, I have many videos explaining, showing you which prophecies you can go check out, which, which texts that refer to it, but it's a 25% loss of life, meaning that the Phoenix phenomenon in May of 2040 is 75% survival. Now, that's mainly, the survival is located from Europe, Africa, uh, a lot of the Middle East, all the way into the Americas. Now, a large portion of that 25% loss of life is, is going to be Eastern Asia. So, it's just the opposite 6.5 years later. Nemesis X object, the year 2046. Even Nostradamus says the whole Western world will die. He's not talking about the people. There will be one third of the world's population die, meaning there's 66.6% .6 survival rate. However, the infrastructures of the West will all be collapsed. Every bit of it. That's the game plan. That's the devil's game plan, guys. If you want to believe in the devil. Now, if I was the devil, I would have my servants create a theater of conflict today of war and the threat of violence that could spread all the way to my homeland, wherever my homeland is. I would build that narrative until the people will gather around a man of peace that I will provide them. If I was the devil, that's the playbook. That's what I would do. Let's see. If I was Blazin Beard, if Jason, if you were AIX, what type of education would you provide? Basically, what people are being educated with right now. You got to understand, we're a minority. We're an extreme minority. Call you don't matter. You can call yourself uh, self-educated. You can call yourself a truther. You can call yourself uh, one of the elect. 
You know, it doesn't matter what label you put on yourself. Those who are actually so actively searching for truth are an extreme minority compared to the collective that are absorbing the information that's being broadcast to them. You're a, you're extreme minority. Anybody on my channel is an extreme minority. It's a yeah. It's in the YouTube in the YouTube universe. There are hundreds of thousands of channels, maybe millions. I don't know, but there's hundreds of thousands of them for sure. And, and I know there's thousands of them that have over a million subs. And some of the ridiculous stuff that they talk about and they just saturate themselves with. Yeah, you're on my channel and you're on any of these other truth or channels. You listen to, the, uh, to Logan of Decode Your Reality. You know, if you're listening to, to John Levy, if you're listening to Autodidactic Campbell, you know, uh, if you're listening to, I mean, you're an extreme minority. J Dreamers, you're extreme. Uh, anybody in any any of, of the speakers in syncretism society, if you're listening to any of them, you are an extreme minority. Yeah, all of us are. Our whole little our whole little community, we're a minority compared to the rest of the world. So I mean, it's not. There's really not. It's just it doesn't. It wouldn't even matter if I had two hundred and fifty thousand subs. I'd still be a. This would still be an extreme minority of people actively looking for. Truth and understanding that the that the narratives around them are all bullshit. Yeah, stream minority. Yeah, people are waking up, but they're not waking up like you think. Like you think. Believe me, if I were the devil, I just revealed to you the playbook. If I were the devil, this is what I would do. Because when it's time for me to make my move and put that man of peace out before the people, the entire world's gonna join him. And then I'm going to get my world one world government. Then I'm going to get my one world financial system. Then I'm going to get my one world religion. And I'm going to I'm going to get it with the agreement of the people. If I was the devil. You got to understand. I've got a criminal mind, guys. I was born that way. That's why I went to prison. If you want to think like the devil, that's how you got to do it. That's how you got to do it. I didn't know Kim was here. Hey, it's an old friend, Kim Espy. Haven't seen you around in a while. Does the devil have a physical manifestation, a body? I don't see why he wouldn't. <clears throat> the physicality that you perceive around you is just that, a perception via basically the deceit of the central nervous system. I believe we live in a hollow field. And because we are spiritual beings jacked in through the central nervous system, we perceive everything as physical. I don't believe it is. I believe that's just that. It is a medium that from basically bridges the, the uh, spiritual and psyche to, to the simulacrum. The central nervous system is very, very technologically advanced. We regard it as biology. It is not. It's technology, every bit of it. Hmm, I'm looking at questions. I'm looking at questions. But until I find one, if I was the devil, I would have my servants allow public sexual exploitation to grow for decades. Strip clubs legalize prostitution like in Vegas. Popularize porn. Make it so freely available to the entire world. Services so when the time is right, I can take it all away from the people. Criminalizing these activities will result in mass convictions to fill prison industries. And for all others, I will provide them a substitute and they will flock to it. What they cannot do in real life for fear of prosecution and imprisonment, they can now easily do in a virtual reality technoscape. And I will offer this to the people. And I will have my servants offer the latest technological bells and whistles and make it freely available to the public so they can stay at home, so they can never go anywhere, and so they can live the rest of their life in the technosphere. That's what I would do if I was the devil.
Let's see. Halloween. Saw something about Halloween. I'm moving so fast through the thread. I'm so far behind the YouTube's bumping my, my thread up. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I don't know why. I mean, I am a little jaded. I've always admitted that in my videos. I've admitted that. Christina, Renee, I'm a little jaded. There's no doubt. I've never really hid that. I'm a rolling with the punches kind of guy. Rose, okay, Rose Stellata. Jason, why are you allowed to disclose all this info? I don't know what you mean by that. I mean, I was just channel surfing not even three days ago, and I saw several channels with hundreds of thousands of viewers that are naming names, talking about, I mean, well, look at the channel Redacted. How is, how is that channel alive? I know why. I have the answer for that. But from your perspective, you should be asking that. How are they right? They are naming names. They're showing actual clips of all kinds of corruption going all to the highest level. I'm not revealing any pronouns. I'm not talking about anybody. If I were the devil, I'd be vague as possible. And that's what I've done in this video and in all my videos. My videos are about ancient history and the psyche and the simulation. My videos are, are about the truth of our reality. And that doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't expose corruption. The people that are in control of the world are worried about being exposed. Archaics doesn't focus on none of them. I don't care. I'm on the bigger things. And uh, I don't know what it is about my channel. You think that that would be like that? I don't just don't. It's now. Now, those who are naming names and stuff, you see what happens to them all the time. Yeah. They go to name, they go to naming names and getting personal and all that. Now that's now I will say this. There has been a, a, a swing in the pendulum, and I predicted this over 280 days ago. In my predictions videos, I said that before the end of 2022, you're going to see evidence of a of a new, a new uh, attitude in in the world. And that is the rise of Christian conservatism which is going to turn into a Christian Reich, a Christian, I'm talking about fanaticism. It's not there yet, but it will be. It's always been, It's uh, there's always been a, a, a seething greater majority of Christian discontent in the West, not just the United States, but in the West. And it's always basically seethed under the surface of these overlords who are liberals and socialists. But that's changing quick, and it's by design. You need to pay attention to what I said every time I said, if I were the devil. Because that's what's unfolding right now. Right now, the liberals and the socialists are being set up as patsies. This is why they look so stupid on, on the Senate floor now, when they're being grilled by, by different senators and investigators. Their protections have been taken from them. They've been hung out to dry. And this November in the United States, you're going to see 100% evidence of everything I've predicted about what's going to happen. I've, I started predicting two years ago. No, I don't, I don't even know if it was two years ago. It was one week after the president was removed from office. I started unleashing prediction videos. I still hold to all those. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're, we're already seeing it right now. Even before we started seeing it in the news and media, I had already made the predictions of this massive swing from liberal to conservative. And it's going to happen this year. And a lot of it's going to be Christian based. This is what's happening. Pay attention to what's going on. These, these, these world leaders that have been backed for so long by the elite are now about to find themselves, find out that they have no backing. They're going to be removed. It's all part. It's all by design. Every bit of this is by design. This is why, New channels have been allowed. I mean, this is why uh, channels have been allowed to take more risks. They've been allowed to tell more truth, like the channel redacted. This is why they're allowed to say more things, because the establishment, those who are under, if I were the devil, 
they're allowed to say these things because that's where the political winds are going. This is what the elite want. The elite want the Christian Puritanism. The elite want to restore order. The elite want to remove all these faces of socialists, Democrats, liberals that have already been awash with corruption. The elite want to remove them all and replace them with people the patriots endorse because those people are the ones you've got to watch out for. That's what's going on. And if I were the devil, I would have endorsed that statement. But also, if I were the devil, I would sow discord and discontent everywhere and give the people just enough to keep them from reaching the tipping point. Keeping the majority lulled into a sense of false security through an artificial virtual reality where they can escape the rising puritanical extremism of the coming Christian Reich. That's how the apocalypse is going to begin. If I were the devil, I'd give the people exactly what they want. No doubt. No doubt. Sarcastic Warlock, how you doing? I haven't seen you in about a week. Have you read Miguel Seriano, and what do you think about esoteric Hitlerism? I've never even heard of any of that. I've never even heard of esoteric Hitlerism. But, uh, no. Don't even know. Thank you, Boru. Man, YouTube just keeps, I'm so far behind in the chat, YouTube just shoving my, my, my chat up. Boru asking about Antarctica. The problem I have with Antarctica, the, the problem I have with the Antarctica situation is, is when you look back here, when you look back here on my library, you see all my books on the library. If I look up Antarctica in any of these old books from the 1800s and, and it deals, I'm not going to get hardly any information. It was like one military vessel that went to the edge and all that. So the archaics data comes from old source materials. I don't really have, I don't have anything about Antarctica because that you don't have. All the YouTube videos about Antarctica, insider information, all that, none of that I've had access to. I don't know where these guys get their information. I understand there's a book or two books about uh, the explorer who went to all the way to Antarctica and, and, and uh, Bird. I understand that. I've seen some of those YouTube videos, but I have, not had, I have not had any access to information about Antarctica other than what you have. I don't. Uh, I don't, that's all. Uh, it's not anything that I can theorize about. I don't, I don't have any special knowledge of it. My information about Antarctica is restricted to the bird material that we all have. We've all seen, except for some of you are familiar with Charles Hapgood, who shows maps that go back 12 and 13 centuries that perfectly mapped out Antarctica when it was ice free, perfectly showing the mountain ranges and the rivers. So, Antarctica's ice and all that, we know from Hollywood productions that Antarctica is covered in snow and ice. Do we know it's that way in reality? Do we really know? Do we know if we go 2,000 miles into the interior, are we going to find lush, temperate valleys and forests and all that stuff? If anything was true in the past, then it's necessarily true somewhere today. Why? The reason I say this is because I have science, I have read scientific reports that show excavations in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s where U.S. archaeologists and Russian archaeologists near Antarctica found an island and it had frozen solid apple trees, but the apples were gigantic. It, these are vapor canopy. This is vapor canopy flora. As you guys know, I got all kinds of videos and stuff about the, the vapor canopy animals and plants were much bigger 
people were bigger too. This is why the people born after the vapor canopy were, were small, but they regarded the people born before the vapor canopy as titans and gigantic. So, yeah, it's Antarctica. I'll look for you. I appreciate that donation, man. I really do. Listen, I have Ridpath's history. This is a very rare collection of books here. I'll go through it tonight, and I will look at because you got me curious now, because so many people ask me about Antarctica. I'll see what these old books, I have 1834 through uh, 1912, all, all in this area of history. I'll look and see what any of these books say about the, the explorations on a Antarctica and see maybe if I have a gym, a gym or some illustrations or a photographs tucked away that I don't know about. I was just going through Ridpath's first two volumes this morning and using my tablet with my magnifier right here. Because you've seen this before. I've used this before. But this morning, some of these illustrations about the ancient past, what archaeologists saw in the 16th, 17th century, are so detailed. It's mind-boggling. So I'm using my magnifier to photograph pictures. And I'm going to do a video out of these rid paths. And uh, maybe I'll find something on Antarctica. I don't know. It's been two hours, guys. It's been absolutely two hours. I have gone through the entire list of If I Were the Devil. Yes, I have. Now, the list is entirely, you know, instructional, just to give you another perspective. However, in your own time, I, I suggest that one of the things you do is stop concentrating. Just try. It's a good exercise. Stop concentrating on what you know you know or 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 anything you believe if you really want to get to the bottom of a belief in what in to establish its veracity the best way to do it is to attack those items that are ancillary to it that are attached to it look at the peripheral of a problem to to basically discover the problem's origin its trajectory and architecture this is what this is what I like to do with my historical analysis. As many of my discoveries were made by this method in deciding for myself what wasn't true, and I making lists. Well, okay, cool, this ain't true, and then I would sit down there. Man, you know what? I never thought about that. I, listen, guys, I'm not normal. I talk to myself a lot when I think nobody's listening, and I'll talk. And I'll man, you know what? I didn't take that in consideration. You know what? That's right. I don't know why I didn't ever think about that. Cross that off my list. That can't be true. And then because I crossed that off my list, it goes, it bleeds into other areas of thought. I'm like, wait a minute. So I go through here, follow this thought. Nah, it couldn't have been because I know they discovered this and I accept that, that discovery is true. I know they did that. And I know she's not lying and she's coming up from a totally different perspective. So I know I got to cross that off now. Nah, that can't be true either. So by the time you're done with your list, you're going to realize you don't have a lot of evidence for many of the things you believe. You don't. Then you've got to analyze, well, why the hell do I believe it? So with that, I'm going to conclude, guys. And from the depths of my heart, thank you for the donations. Thank you for the support. Thank you for giving me over a thousand likes before the video was even over. Thank you. I'm going live. With somebody who's got about 250,000 subs, but uh, he's a good guy. He's a Texas boy. I like him. And uh, we're just going to shoot the shit and record the video and, and, and put it on. But um, before that, I got a really interesting video. I'm going to show you another. It's going to be my third video on, on the machines in the sky. So until then, guys, I will holler at you. Don't even know how to get out of here. Y'all, y'all go to check that that Greg Reese video. Y'all check that Greg Reese video. Out. Oh, the oh the other guy too, Alex Jones. If that's if that's true or not, I don't know. I know who he is, but I don't know why my research would cross over into his. He's more like political, isn't he? Alex Jones. He has some conspiracy stuff, I guess. I don't know. Go ahead, and go ahead and send my love you out in the text before I leave. Thank you, Christina Renee. 204. 204 levels of the pyramid to, 
you know, is the return of the chief cornerstone. The 204th level is the chief cornerstone. That will make it 481 feet high. And it's a very appropriate time in, in minutes to go ahead and close this video. Well, two hours and four minutes.